Hey everyone, Jeff here. Welcome to episode eight of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. Thank you for tuning in. I, I appreciate you guys joining me along the way. In our previous episode, we talked about phasing and creating demolition plans and really getting our model set up for what we're gonna do today. Um, which is starting to lay out our, our design, our sketch design, using our generic line-based model, filling in a couple details like floor-to-ceiling windows, et cetera, um, punching in some new windows, and then jumping into Enscape to start playing with how that looks uh, in the human perspective. So I'm super excited to show this to you guys. And with that, I think we'll just jump right into Revit right now. So what you see here is actually the clean floor plan, right? The, we, we demoed the, the walls, doors, windows, et cetera, in the last episode. And um, this is the view is actually set to um, the phase filter is is uh, show previous plus new and the phase is set to new construction. So what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing some reference planes that represent the center of those columns. Um, as I mentioned in previous episodes, uh, those columns are an important piece of, of the project in the sense that the existing windows looked right into them and we wanna make sure that in the new scheme, um, the windows are looking through the columns and out into the uh, front yard um, and not directly at the comms. And so I'm actually just modifying some window sizes here. Um, so editing the, the window type, which is just a picture window and, uh, and changing the size of them. So in this initial scheme, um, I'm going with this idea of the windows being sort of floor to ceiling glass um, and breaking up the, the north wall um, counter space um, with floor to ceiling glass. One of the, the issues in this kitchen existing was always the amount of natural light. Um, what you'll see as this design develops is I actually start um, playing with that idea and changing over time. I'm actually really excited for you guys to sort of see. I'm, I was excited to see uh, how, how the design progressed over time and how it changed from some of these initial sketches. But um, here I'm just laying out this window, uh, as you can see, in between. And then I'm taking my line base family. Um, this is the line base cabinet family. And you'll see I'm just drawing it in. Um, I can push and pull it the length of the of the of the wall. Um, and then I can place it in there. And then when I go in 3D, I can actually modify um, does it have a wall cabinet? Does it not? But you notice I'm clicking and drawing it just like it's a wall. And that's where the, the benefits of it, of this family are right there. See, here's the here's the cabinets in place. Um, I can use my visibility parameters that we set up in the previous episode. Um, and I can turn off the wall cabinet. And you can see I'm starting to play with this idea of, of floor to ceiling glass breaking up the, the cabinet space along this wall here. And now I'm going to place my uh, cabinet for uh, my island. As I mentioned uh, when I was when we were making the family, I made it so that I can turn on um, the front and back lips to make it look like an island. Obviously, we could have just um, you know made a separate family type, but um, I like the idea of doing it in one, and then just using some temporary dimensions and and whatnot to to um, to make sure that the spacing is okay. Remember, we're just roughing this in here, um, really for the idea of sort of test fitting our design. Right. So far, all we've had is a uh, transparent uh, trace sketch that was really bubbly, right? So now we're kind of on the next phase of let's test it out in real scale. Let's go back to sketching. Let's go back to the test, and we go back and forth between the computer um, and and uh, and analog drawing. So here I'm just kind of laying out the island based on some some clearances around it. Um, I think I was going with four feet, give or take. Notice how I have the ability to just drag this cabinet space, just drag it along to adjust the size. If you guys were using the out of the box cabinets, right? You would have to click, 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 change the size of three or four of them. You know, figure out how many more you wanted in between, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and it gets gets extremely tedious. Here, I have the flexibility of just sort of pushing and pulling this cabinet to make it fit the space I want, and then we can always convert it to the more detailed stuff. Here, I'm just kind of creating those clearances to make to to see what what it looks like. Um, you know. What you're seeing here is me working in Revit, but um, I'm really just sort of testing out my idea to scale as part of what's happening here. So now as I go in 3D, you'll see here's here's the island cabinet. I can turn off the upper cabinets because it's a visibility parameter. And now I can start playing with it and looking at this, this kitchen as I lay it out. How fast I was able to put base cabinets, wall cabinets, and an island in and not really have to think about it and feel much less restricted um, is a huge bonus. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into Enscape and I'm going to actually look at it in, in, in perspective. So we, as Revit users, we're always looking down in these orthogonal 3D views. And the one thing I will tell you is that you lose a sense of scale. Um, you know, <laughs> doing projects from this size up to multi-billion dollar buildings, um, I 
can completely attest to the idea that um, you lose sense of scale. Some of these buildings, that, projects I've worked on for many years, and then go out and see them being built in real life, um, you know, you almost you almost don't realize how big they are, small they are, etc. So, doing this sort of jump into Enscape, going into perspective view, um, even putting people in during some of these phases, um, and then jumping in and looking at it gives you a much better feel of the human perspective of your space. So, as you can see, what I'm doing here is I've launched Enscape. I'm going to change my settings. One of the things I'll do at this early stage is I will almost always go into white mode because I'm not paying attention to materiality. I'm not I don't want to be distracted by materials um, at this stage of the game. Um, I just go right into white mode, which is a setting in Enscape, and then I jump right inside. And there you go. Now, if you you've press spacebar, you can go to walk mode. Um, you'll see now I really get a sense of what this space feels like. Obviously, I haven't put windows in on the left hand side. I'm just playing with the lighting now to try and get the sun inside. And you can see I also haven't demoed the, so the soffit yet, which I just realized. Um, but you can start seeing how much different the space feels as opposed to that 3D section box orthogonal view. And I can start feeling out how this is going to look and feel within the real world. So now I'm pausing Enscape um, and I'm going to jump back into my view. It's important to pause Enscape if you're doing a lot of changes in between um, because Enscape does automatically update as you're going through and uh, designing. And then I'm going to demolish that uh, that soffit there, that lovely soffit. So I'm um, selecting the soffit, the walls and the ceiling, and I'm changing the phase demolish to new construction. They were built in existing phase demolish, new construction. Same thing with the soffit as well. If I didn't get it um, as well, change it from from uh, phase demolish none to new construction. And now they will get demolished in my reflected ceiling plan demo plans, um, but also in those new 3D views. So as I jump back into Enscape, you can see now that soffit's not in the way. It's not as distracting. Um, you can see I have outlines on. That's another thing, too. It's helpful um, when you're when you're working in white mode to sort of see the edges of your shapes. And now I'm just looking at different views. I'm, I'm getting a feel of the space, right? That there's, there's no better way to do it than this, other than maybe throwing on the VR goggles, but same idea. Um, and, and you can see here, I'm just sort of moving around and, and getting a feel for the space. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got our cabinets in there, I'm going to throw in this um, floor to ceiling glass wall in the corner. And I'm actually going to use a curtain wall system, a storefront curtain wall, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, you can see I'm just going to uh, click and place it just like I would drag a wall. And then you notice I'm using a system that doesn't have any mullions on it right now. So now I'm going to want these these windows to match the head height of the door. So uh, so I'm taking the curtain wall and I'm uh, I'm changing it so that the height is equal to the height of the door. And then I'm going to place a manual grid for something like this. I probably wouldn't create a custom system if I didn't need to. And now I'm going to place my uh, my um, my mullions. Uh, you can see I used a five by five quad corner, and then I'm just using uh, one that I have built in here, which I think is two and a half. Um, obviously, you can use whatever mullions you want, but I'm just sort of manually manually placing them in. And now I have the this sort of floor to ceiling glass uh, wall with a nice little thick corner. Um, I'm starting to fill in the space a little bit and, and starting to play with the the design idea. Now, if I jump back in Enscape, I can see how that window looks. Obviously, I have some cleaning up to do in the ceiling, but um, you can see it's it's really starting to give you a feel for this specific layout and what this what the space is going to look like. Alrighty, so there you have it. Uh, we started laying out our kitchen using our sketch uh, line based cabinet family. After we demoed the existing, we made some room, we have our sketch, and then we started laying it out. So that's the start of the process, right? So I sketch it, you saw the original sketches, um, you know, they're, they're rough, uh, they're just an idea. Lay this thing out real quick using this uh, simple modified family. Um, jump in Enscape, look at it in perspective, look at it in 3D, look at it in floor plan, um, and then jump back to sketching. Um, and so, you know, I showed the original um, trace sketches, and then um, I will start to develop these more fine sketches using that tone paper and start just going back and forth. I see how this looks. I don't like it. I may jump back into the drawing board and do some other sketches. I may use uh, Revit itself as a way to modify the design. In the next episode, uh, what I'm going to show you is actually how I use design options to test out two options in this 
early phase. We're even going to use them as we go throughout the project in a more detailed manner um, later on. But just for this quick um, test fitting of, of your ideas, um, being able to understand and use design options is huge. And so if you remember my sketches from, from the trace episode, uh, I had two options. Uh, there was one that we were just looking at where we have cabinets along the north wall and an island and then there's another one where they're rotated 90 degrees and so being able to flip between those in an endscape view as well as a floor plan view as well as a 3d view in revit gives the idea of how those two options kind of compare to each other so stick around uh, for the next episode thanks for tuning in be sure to check out revitfamily.biz and let them know that you support us and uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel i hope you guys are enjoying this series and i look forward to uh, uh seeing you guys soon